Douglas and Art. <laughs> I'm yeah, a huge sure. fan of DreamWorks. I've gone to your studios many, many times for, for press stuff. Big fan of your guys' anim animations as well. Uh, so, um, with with the, the the TV stuff, and the movie, I'm sure you guys get asked these questions many times. So how do you how do you make sure that they don't you know uh, I don't know go against each other? I guess you could say. It. We're in pretty close contact with uh, with Dean, um, director, writer, director of the movies. Mm -hmm. So. He, he, you know, we, we check with him when we're going to do certain, you know, before the season, we break in the season, we say this is the direction we're going to go, is it step on anything? Uh, sometimes he'll say, yeah, can you, can you adjust it, so, because mm -hmm. I'm going to do this in the next movie, or, um, or so, a lot of times We had says, much more of an issue in season, in the previous uh, iteration of the show, because... The writers were uh, yeah, because we didn't know what the movie was really going to be, so we were sort of writing in the dark. But as soon as, but for the Netflix, you know, going forward with Netflix, we know where the series show's going because it's we've all it's seen all the movie. Yes, yeah, it's, it's all. So, yeah, yeah. Because our soul movie. show is the prequel to the to the sequel, mm. so we know everything that's going to happen. So we pretty much can just sort of yeah, write to that. For certain things, we we know we can't do in the series. We can't. We can't have Hiccup meet his mother, obviously, because he does that in the but sequel. But Stokes alive. Uh, Stokes alive. Stokes still alive. Yes. Um, but we can tease towards. So we can't kill Stoic in the series. Yeah. Can't do that. Right. No, definitely. Um, we can tease towards uh, like Drago, like our bad guys throughout the series. You, you know, you get a sense that they're working for this big guy, and you know, we we we'll set that sort of stuff up. There's just certain things that. Um, we stay away from, but like Doug said, it's pretty self-explanatory, I guess, yeah. because the, you know. The great thing is we get to introduce things like the flight suit mm -hmm. that's in the second movie, and the, the Dragon, Blade. Dragon Blade that's in the second movie, the mm -hmm. flaming sword, yeah. um, and how they came to be, how did Stoic get his dragon, how did uh, Garber get Gromp? We get to put that in yeah. the series, and, and so the audience will know how they got from the first movie to the second movie, sort of, mm -hmm. through the TV series. I'm, I'm glad you guys do that, because I, I don't like how DC series is separate from DC movies, you know, the, the right. characters, mm -hmm. different stories, like, you know. You no, guys, I know, guys. it's it's great. I mean, yeah. we're really, really lucky that we have the relationship we do with Dean and, um, and, Bonnie, Arnold. and Bonnie Arnold, and we really do check in with each other. And Greg Taylor is an executive at DreamWorks who's a movie executive primarily, but he also works on our mm -hmm. show. So he really is in the loop about sort of. Yeah, he, we check with him a lot, and he's. If we don't have a chance to talk with, with Dean or Bonnie, we can talk to Greg, and you know. But we, yeah. but they're so accessible. I mean, honestly, we shoot. We'll shoot Dean an email and just go, "Hey, man, we're thinking of this for an episode. What do you think? Are you cool with it?" And he'll usually be like, yeah. "Go for it." You know. And we'll show him the first couple episodes of the season, and he'll say, "You know, I love it. It's great. Just one little thing." And but he's really supportive. I mean, he's yeah, been amazing. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. we really have yeah. a great relationship with him. So, how is this going to be um, the freedom that Netflix offers? Is it different from what you guys had at Cartoon Network, which I loved? I loved it. For sure. Uh, one, the the fact that the kids are older gives you freedom to tell different types of stories, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah, and you I know? think you know. DreamWorks is very passionate about their properties, and I think partnering with Netflix was brilliant because Netflix allows DreamWorks the freedom to really tell the stories the way DreamWorks wants to tell the stories, which mm -hmm. allows us the freedom to do the same. And we've been there so long now that we're pretty much allowed. He was a kid when he started. I was a kid. <laughs> I, was, I was like your age. <laughs> but we're basically allowed to, to do, within the parameters of, of the movies and stuff, what we want to do. And uh, and the cool thing is, is that Netflix really pushed us to make something new. Yeah, they wanted a new show. They wanted something completely different, looks different, sounds different, feels different. And when you see it, you'll it really does yeah. feel very different. Yeah. It's a it's a really different show. And the and the Cartoon Network series was great. It was awesome. But this and I mean you 
you look back at that series, I mean, just in the, I mean, us having grown as writers throughout the course of these episodes, um, getting to know the characters better, our directors, our animators, everybody, I mean, we're doing stuff now that is just crazy. Like, you, you, we couldn't even come close to and doing And technology's it. changed yeah. in five years or four years. I mean, mm -hmm. the interaction with water that we have now that we couldn't have before, the flocks of dragons we could mm -hmm. never have done before. Yeah. And, we've, you know. we've created crowd systems and things like that uh, so we can do this stuff for TV. Is, was the plan always to have another series to lead up to you know, the sequel since a lot, like as the sequel was developing, was that always the plan? Well, I think that the plan after the first movie was definitely to the kids, they've got friends of the dragons, now how they live with them, that was definitely the plan for the series. And I think once the series had success, I think then at that point it was sort of we know we're going to do something, we just didn't know what yet. So finding out and reading and knowing what the sequel was, then we were able to say, well, what if we do it this way? Because there's no, you know, the third, the the sequel ends and it's sort of a to be continued. So the, the third movie is gonna pick up right where that left off. Um, so there's no, no time in there to do anything. Um, so that's why we said, let's do it. Let's do the prequel to the sequel. Yeah, and, and we really didn't know whether we were going to do them as older kids or younger kids yeah, right wrote, up until, yeah, before, right before we started writing the show. We wrote, I mean, we wrote the first 10 scripts kind of age neutral mm. so we could pull the trigger and do go either way. Mm. But it was cool that we were able to age them up because, you know, they're new rigs or new, you know, it just it gives you a whole new storytelling and it, it, it infuses... I think for us and for our writers and for our team, right, it infuses a, a new energy if you feel, yeah. if you feel like something's new and you're like, you just get yeah. juiced, excited. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, what about character designs? I want to ask because, you know, with, with this series, you have uh, freedom to introduce new dragons, perhaps. You know, new, uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about that? And also, I remember going to uh, DreamWorks Studios one time and did the whole new technology that you guys had to for animation you know, mm. just you know with a little pen on the on the on the screen yeah. mm. did you guys uh, co incorporate that for your series or and and, and what, you what kind of invented dragons? that right? I invented that yeah so that you invented that. that yeah that was him. <laughs> we actually animate the show in um, in Taiwan, Taiwan and China and China wow, okay. so the, sh no the it's mm -hmm. a, it, they use a different system over there than the right. feature guys use mm -hmm. uh, but it still looks great I mean I think it, it's amazing what they do with with and we're able to pull from like Stoics Dragon, Gobbers Dragon. We're able to pull from the movie. Yeah, we those can take designs, those designs. We can take those assets, and, those and, assets use them. and use them. And then there's stuff that we create. You know, some of the stuff we we pull from the original Book of Dragons. There's a lot of a lot of uh, original artwork in there. And sometimes uh, we'll take this one and this one and say, well, what if we put these two together? Um, and then we we're talking to somebody else. Uh, we get a lot of inspiration in uh, the animal kingdom. Like a lot of what our dragons do, we try to base it on reality. So um, it's, that was always the thing with this show, with DreamWorks, is you know, want it grounded, want it grounded, not nothing. So the, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing fantastic, nothing magical, nothing fantastic. They're always very, very clear that they don't want any magical elements mm -hmm. or anything that can't be explained. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the more we can we can ground new dragons and that sort of thing yeah. in reality, like you know the de the death song is you know based on the siren. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of things like that that we base it either out of mythology or out of the animal. Yeah, we kingdom. don't have dragons that can disappear and reappear. I mean, we have them. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. can camouflage themselves, which mm -hmm. is sort of yeah. the same, you know, similar, yeah. but yeah. I know the fan base is passionate because I'm very active on social media with mm -hmm. my fellow dragon fans. Oh, okay, cool. Um, have you guys ever had a fan send you a new dragon or and can incorporate an idea or anything like that? Mm. Us personally, Brooke, I think, a guy yeah. who works for us, we gets have, stuff yeah. all the time. We have a guy named Brooke Chalmers who is a, he's the, he runs the uh, sort of setting up all the records and all that stuff, but he's also very, very much in touch with the fans, mm -hmm. and his wall is papered. People send in all <laughs> sorts of stuff. Fan drawings, and some of them are yeah. brilliant. I mean, I saw a girl. I signed a sketchbook today of a girl. I don't know if you did, 
and did she had drawn a bunch of astros oh, and no, stuff, and it was unbelievable. And there's yeah. so many brilliant people out there that are just I'm doing trying to think if anybody's stuff. ever sent in dragons. I don't no, know. I'm they, sure they have. Yeah, I, I'm not not sure. that I've seen. I haven't seen it, though. But they send in a lot of Astrid, you know. Mm. It's always Astrid and Hiccup Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want it so bad. They just oh, want them to get together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the series, what sort of... Um, relationships will we see Hiccup go through? Will there be any romance in this series? Leading there, up? We... there will be. I mean, the, yeah. look, when you start the sequel, they're obviously yeah. at a different place. So, you know, we don't lean too heavy into it mm -hmm. because our core audience is still mm -hmm. kids. So, but being on Netflix, we're able, because they're aged up too, we're able to, to lean into a little bit. So by the time this, these seasons butt up against the, the sequel, We'll definitely have set that up. And we'll also have set up the uh, fish legs, it's not loud, rough nut triangle. Um, I mean, fish legs is involved in a sort of relationship mm -hmm. in the, with but somebody it's, But that's, it's not gonna be who he, yeah, but it won't be rough nut. Yeah. yeah. So it's, Ooh, yeah. Hello. You, you don't see it coming mm -hmm. and it's really cute. So we get to do some stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, the, the key relationship, I mean, the one, you know, is Hiccup and Toothless, obviously. I mean, that's the, that's always, we have a saying, where's Toothless? Like, you know, we, in a script, if we're looking at a script or reading an outline, we'll just like write WT, where's Toothless? You know, and like, we need, they need to be in there. They need to, that drives the story. Mm -hmm. But. The flip side is that we're because we do a series and we have spend so much time with these characters, we're able to do a tough them. nut story, yeah. or do a snot loud story, or tough and rough. Or, yeah, stuff they just, yeah. they just don't have time for in the movie, you know. Yeah. So we we get to do that, which is fun, you know. And you get yeah. to just there's an episode where tough nut gets bitten by a, he thinks he gets bitten by a were dragon and he's turning into a, a lichen wing. A lichen wing. That's what it's called, yeah. And he's, uh, he thinks he's turning into a, a dragon. Yeah. And at the full moon, he's going to become a dragon. Yeah. He's going to eat all his friends. Yeah. So he locks yeah. himself in a... He uh, saw a chicken in the thing. He, he locks himself chicken. in with chicken. and Him and chicken are locked in a pen. Yeah. And then he breaks out and goes yeah. you know, across the forest. Mm -hmm. And he's going to... When he turns into a lichen wing, he's going to leap off the highest point. And, and they have to stop him. And they have to stop him. I mean, it's... There's hilarious. some really fun episodes we get to do, you know. When we break the season, we always, we sort of, you know, we have a board and we look at it and we're always like, okay, who haven't we had in a while? Yeah. You know, what, you know, obviously you're going to have your Hiccup and Toothless centric episodes, but then you're like, mm -hmm. okay, we need an Astrid episode. Let's have a fish Or we've episode. never put Tough Nut and Astrid right. together. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Or we've never put Snot Loud and Fish Legs along together. Let's do that. That's always fun to pair them up. Yeah. We were discussing, you know, the technology and how, you know, a couple of years you could advance. Oh, yeah. By leaps and it's amazing. When you were writing an episode, did that ever come into consideration, like what you yeah. can and can't do? All the time. All the time, but our visual effects supervisor says to us, keep writing things that we can't do. So that's our job is to push the envelope. Obviously.